Hey everyone, uh, welcome to the show. Today we're going to be tackling a question that's normally found in paper 2. And uh, yeah, let's just get straight into it. So we have a diagram over here, as you can see. And there's a lot of things going on. Uh, well, not a lot, but it's helpful information. More information, the better, I guess. So uh, we have this little paragraph on top that just. Um, Putting everything out, we have uh, a and its coordinates as minus seven and two, which makes sense. You know, the x value is negative, y is positive, and they don't give us b, but uh, based off its position compared to the axis, we know that um, x should be positive and y should be negative. And then c is given as six and three, uh, d is not given as well, uh, and they say that's just the corners of our rectangle over here. And then, yeah, which, um, yeah, that's about it. Let's go to the next line. Uh, it says, the equation of AD, which is this one over here, uh, is y equals to 2x plus 16. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. It's a straight line. And we know straight lines are in the form of y equals to mx plus c. So 2 over there is our gradient. And 16, in this case, would be our y-intercept, which... Uh, makes sense because 16 will probably be up here somewhere and then it says the line a b that one over there uh, cuts the y-axis at g which is that point over there which is marked already and the x intercept of the line b c so that line over there is at the point f and they last label they labeled um, the x value as p and y as zero and um, the angle of inclination at um, bc is alpha no, it's just an angle uh, if you're more comfortable with theta not really no difference it's like a and b x and y you know just a different label and they say that the angles of the rectangle um, intersect at the point m uh, <laughs> actually cute of them because we know that uh, that's actually the midpoint so they label it m so nice of them righto uh <coughs> let's go and look at the first question calculate the coordinates of m and just like i said there um m is the midpoint between uh, a rectangle you know this kind of properties of rectangles that you should know and if we're just gonna give um do midpoint um, formula to just get this to so we say that um M's, let's see, M's coordinates uh, is, remember it's a midpoint, so it's like halfway. So how do you find the halfway between two points? You just add them and divide them by two. So it's going to be X, oh, something wrong. So it's going to be X1 plus X2. Uh, divided by 2 and then we have our second this just means uh, a separate number in this case or coordinate so they don't the calculations don't um, mix with each other you can think about it like that and then on this side we have uh, y1 because it's the same thing plus y2 over 2 and then that gives us we just substitute a's a's value and b's values in so if we just take um a which is x value call that x1 so this will be minus 7 plus this x value is 6 at the all over let's do that a bit better all over 2 and then our y uh, we're going to write that as 2 for our y value plus 3 and then you can type this in your calculator and then therefore m it's going to give us minus 7 plus 6 is minus 1, so that's going to be negative a half, which does make sense because uh, we see that our x value at our m's position it's negative and it's very close, so therefore a half makes sense. And then 2 plus 3 is 5, 5 divided by 2 is 5, five, uh, five divided by 2, I guess, yeah. <laughs> and that makes sense because it's positive in the y. Right, so, and there you go, two marks, easy. Next question. Um, write down the gradient of BC in terms of P. 
let's see where our line BC is. BC is this line over here. Um, now look at the question. The question says they want a gradient uh, in terms of P. So from this, from the get-go, you can see, okay, um, BC is parallel to AD, and know that um, parallel lines have the same gradient. So we, we know that our gradient is going to be 2 at this point. But they are asking they want our answer in terms of P. So if you write 2 down, that even though the gradient is 2, that would be wrong because you're not giving it in terms of P. So what else we can do, uh, we know that P is just this F um, value over here, the X value. Um, so what we can do is we can find, you see we have two points over here with um, F and C. So what we're going to do, we're going to use them and just use our gradient formula. So we're going to, because that's what they're asking, they want our gradient, so we can label this M and then of BC, I guess, since that's the main line, uh, that's what they're asking for. So we can write um, M of BC. Oopsie. Uh, that looks horrible. BC is equal to, remember the formula for um, a gradient is changing Y over changing X. So we just want to pop in our Y values. We can call this um, Y1, Y2, X, uh, X1, X2, yeah. So that will be, um, yeah, let's just write changing Y over changing X, which is just Y1 minus Y2, or the other way around. But remember, so, lo so long we're constant with our, our labels, we will be fine. X2 minus x1 minus x2 so if you wrote x2 minus x1 it really doesn't matter but uh, the important part is that this be x1 okay. well not this one that one can also be x1 but i'm saying that um you can't say this is x1 and this becomes y y1 you know you have to remain constant so this becomes x2 and y2 um, in the first question, I didn't really um, talk about it because, yeah, we're just adding. So, we know when you add numbers both ways, you know, 2 plus 3 is 5 and, five, and 3 plus 2 is 5. So, it doesn't really matter, but 2 minus 3 and 3 minus 2 is not the same number, right? So, right, so this equals to um, y1. You can see y1 is uh, 3. Uh, y2 is 0. Uh, my all over x1 which is 6 and x2 is p so minus p that minus coming from the formula and that is our answer we can't really simplify any further so we have 3 over 6 minus p and that is our gradient of bc in terms of p right uh, in terms of you should know that it just our answer, but our answer contains the what's in terms of. <laughs> and so, so the next question says, calculate the value of p. But uh, look at this part. It says hence. Hence just means before. You know, based on the information before. So uh, the information before is that our gradient p c is equal to three over six minus p. So as I said earlier. Uh, our gradient is 2. We know that it's 2 because BC is parallel to AD and AD's gradient is 2. So we know, um, okay, you can even write it in to show the marker. You can say uh, AD, well, not AD, yep, AD. AD is parallel to BC. Therefore, uh, the gradient of BC is equal to the gradient of AD, uh, which is 2. So therefore, uh, you can just write gradient of BC equals to 3 over 6 minus P. And our gradient, uh, what you just labeled here, is 2. So we have 2 equals to 3 over 6 minus 
P, let's see, yeah. And then uh, we just multiply both sides, um, yeah, both sides by six minus P. And then if we multiply this, we're gonna get 12 minus two P is equal to three. Yeah, just multiplying that by that. And then, can we just, uh, didn't allocate enough space here. Uh, so we're just gonna have, it's minus, oops, minus two P is equal to, uh, the 12 comes over, it becomes negative, so it's three minus, um, it's three minus 12. Uh, um, so three minus 12 is minus nine. So P is equal to nine over two. And does that make sense? We see that P is positive, And if we look at our graph, yes, P should be positive because it's on this side of our, uh, on our X axis. It's, you know, it's on the right hand side of our Y now. Righto, and that's uh, number three. Right, number four. Calculate the length of BD for three marks. So DB. So let's see what is DB. DB is this diagonal over here. So, uh, how we can do this? Because notice we are not given the coordinates of P and D. So how could we calculate the length? And it's three marks, so there's a few steps that's going to be in it. Um, you should know that from triangles that um, these these lengths are equal. You know, opposite, opposite. You know, does it like I don't know, very in primary school they teach you shapes and stuff. And then you know like these opposite lengths are equal, you know, on a, in a rectangle, you know, in a square, all sides are equal. Now, the diagonals, they, they are equal as well, like the diagonal line. So, that's just a fancy way of saying, yeah, we can use A and C. We can find the length of A and C, and then that length is going to be the same as PD. Right? So, um, we can just use the length formula, distance formula. So we can say the length of, um, what's it, AC? AC uh, equals to the square root of, uh, so it's once again, the same as before. Um, uh, so long you use the same consistency in your, in your numbering of your letters, the order doesn't really matter. Because you can have a case where you have um, Y first, or, or you can have the, the, the x's first. So I'm going to use the x's first. I'm going to go x, um, x2, x or x2, minus x1, plus y2, minus y1. All right, then that's the whole thing is square rooted. And then we just substitute in. So, okay, let's just label them. And this one already has x1 and x2, so that's going to be even good, that's going to be better for us, so this one becomes uh, x2 and y2, oh and yo, <laughs> this x2 and this x2 is not the same, right, that that should be very clear, because you can see uh, this y value is 2, that y value is 0, so they are definitely not the same, right, so, um, right, let's substitute them in, uh, which are we substituting in, uh, x2, which is minus 7 and 6. So it's minus 7, minus 6. And uh, this thing should be squared, right? No. Definitely should be squared. It's going to be a super bad answer. Very small answer if I didn't square it. Okay, and then the y's, y2 is 2 and 3, so it's 2 minus 3, 2 minus 3, it should be squared as well, square root of that, and then you type that in the calculator, and if you type that in your calculator, right over there you're going to get the square root 170, right? And go ahead, type it in, you should get that. And then this here is the length of um, the distance of AC. But 
as we um, discussed earlier, that is actually the same. That is the equal distance of BD, uh, which is actually equal to uh, the distance of BD, which is what they're asking for. And then your reason is properties of a rectangle. So, yeah. All right. Uh, next, next question is uh, two marks. So, not two not that much steps. They say to calculate the size of our angle alpha, which is this one over here. So we have our value of x2, well, our p in this case, and uh, which was 9 over 2. Yes, 9 over 2. So are we going to get this angle over here? So I think if you look on your formula sheet, you're going to get, you could know that 10 of uh, theta, or in this case alpha, is equal to our gradient, so our line of inclination. So we know that this gradient here is 2 because it's parallel to that, uh, you know, to AD. So we have 10 of alpha, that's what we're looking for, is equal to 2. So we have 10 of alpha is equal to 2. And then we um, Octan on both sides, so we're going to be left with um, alpha is equal to arc tan of 2. And if you type this in your calculator, and if you type this in your calculator, you're going to, whoop, this is a 2 eh? not a <laughs> not a alpha. And then you're going to get uh, theta, and therefore theta is equal to 63.43. Alright, so that was easy. Easy two marks. Well done. Alright, uh, next question. Calculate the size of OGB, uh, angle of OGB. Let's look where that is on a diagram. We see uh, O is over there, GB. So it's this angle, OGB. So it's this angle. So how are we going to get this angle over here? Well, if you think about it, um, the only angle we have is this one over here, this, um, the alpha so far. And then we should know from our properties of um, rectangles that all the corners are 90 degrees. Right? Yeah. And then, yeah, this is 90 as well. So what else can we do? We see that uh, it's 90, 90, 90, this angle we have. Uh, if you look at it, this and then this over here is 90 as well because that's our two axes and we know that they cut each other at 90 degrees. Um, and look at that. Can you see that OGBF this year makes a, you know, a quad over there? And we just don't have this angle over here, this OFB angle. But you know that uh, where lines intersect, the opposite angles are equal, so this will be alpha as well. And then from, so we have all four of this. Well, we don't have this one. This is the one we're looking for. This is our X case in, in this case. So what we're going to do, we're going to sum them all up, and then we should know that the sum of all angles in a quad is equal to 360. Well done. I hope you said 360, because then I just look weird. <laughs> Probably still look weird. Anyway, so we say, okay, uh, cyclic quad, you know, you can write your reasons down, and you say 360 is therefore equal to OBG. No, not OBG, OGB. I think it's going to be, anyway. Uh, over here, plus, um, no, okay, right, let's uh, actually write it fancy, uh, let's write the proper way down, uh, over here, and we're going to say, uh, G-O-F, uh, G-O-F, uh, the reason this one is 90 degrees is because it's, the uh, um, from the axis, and then, this angle over here is alpha as well, O, F, B, O, F, B, uh, this is the same as alpha, and then plus our B angle over there, and let's call that G, B, F, G, B, F, right, and then, let's see degrees, uh, remember, you have to give reasons for why they, or like what their values are. So I think it can be marked down if you just say 
ah, oh, this one's 90 degrees without giving a reason. You also always have to give a reason. So this is what the one we're looking for from our question. So it's OGB. Uh, this one was from our origin, which is, you know, the axis um, bisect each other at 90. So this is 90 degrees. Um, OFB is our alpha angle. Yeah, double check that. Yes. And that is because when lines intersect, they are uh, opposite angles are equal. So that is 63.43 degrees. And then this is 90 degrees as well because that is uh, properties of rectangle. Right. And then we just take them all over. So therefore, O, let's see, O, G, B is equal to, type in that in your calculator, just 360 minus 90, minus 90 minus uh, 63.43 gives you, gives you 116.57 degrees. All right, so, and that would give you three marks. Uh, don't forget to include your reasons. I'm emphasizing that because, you know, one or two marks can stop you from failing or it could even give you a distinction you know one two marks matter all right uh number seven here yeah, the second last question it says determine the equation of a circle passing through the points d b c in the form of uh, that's our that's our standard uh, form of a circle um we can use x minus a all squared plus y minus b all squared equals to r squared. So if we go to our diagram, it says it passes through the line d, b, and c. So it's d, b, and c. Notice how they say that it doesn't pass through a, right? But you should actually, like, this, these distances are very, you know, um, symmetric if you think about it. Because... For a circle to be a circle, right, if I can throw this nicely, uh, and for it to be nicely shaped, like, if, if you're going to go this way around, it's, it's just not going to, you know, be a nice circle. Like, the center is going to be off. There's, there's, no, there's no possible center, really, because it's, it's not going to be a proper circle because some radii is going to be bigger than others. So, if you draw the proper circle for it to, you know, be a nice circle that has equal area, it's going to pass through A. Wow, that was a brilliant circle for me. Yeah, yeah, this is the one, guys, this is the one. Yeah. Yeah, close enough, you get the gist of it. And in doing that, we notice M. Right? That, that's what you should notice, this point M over here, that's going to be the center of our circle. And once we have a center of the circle, we can get the equation of the circle no matter what. And we know from 3.1 that m is equal to minus half, and y is uh, 5 over 2. So actually, let me just take that with me. Uh, m is equal to uh, minus a half and 5. All right. So <coughs> um, our a point is actually the distance from the origin to the the x distance from our origin to our center of our circle. So we're just going to have x minus minus half, which becomes plus half uh, squared, or squared plus y minus 5 all squared. And then r over there is our radius. And what we know about the radii, they are half our diameter and if you look at our diagram oh, this distance over here is our diameter which we calculated before which is this over here which is y, the square root of 170 170 so our radii would then be the square root of 170 over 2 squared and that should be your answer. And what we can do is we can simplify uh, this over here because you see we just have numbers in here. And if you take take this and just type in your calculator, 
So this this pretty much stays the same over here. You can multiply it out, but then, uh, but uh, the question actually says is once it's in the form of uh, a this form over there, a minus b squared plus uh, y mi minus b squared uh, plus y minus five squared, which is in that form over there. And if you type this in your calculator, you will get forty-two point five degrees. No, I'm joking. It's not a, it's not an angle. Uh, it's just the distance, radii distance of a circle. I do. Last question. So we we have if AD is shifted so that ABCD becomes a square, right? Will BC be a tangent? To the circle passing through a m and b where uh, m is now the intersection of the diagonal of the square a b c d motivate your answer so this, is, this could be a little tricky one but it's only two marks so it's you know they always try and get you so you don't get 100 percent for your paper could be one of those but uh let's see uh let's just work through it so we say if a d is shifted right so we're going to shift a d uh, we can't really shift AD in that direction, you know, away because then this line just becomes longer and we can already see that this line is longer than this line over here. So what we're going to do, we're going to bring it in probably till about over here, not about, uh, roughly about this length over here. So we're going to need AD. So this is, uh, this is roughly a square, you know, it's, it's not, but let's just pretend. And then they say, uh, will it will, uh, BC be a tangent? To A M B, so we're gonna draw circle A M B, which is gonna be uh, these three points here. So if we draw our makeshift circle, oh nope, not like that. Uh, about there, I guess. That's nice curvature. Come over there and there. And then oh, that looks really nice actually. And then. <laughs> And this is, um, will BC be a tangent to the circle, right? And BC is this line over here. And we know a tangent only touches our circle once. Well, this the circle touches actually <laughs> more than once. Let's do it much better in that case. So it's going to go there, and then I just want to get it like, uh, nice over there. Yeah, ah, a little bit. So they ask, will this, uh, this, this line here, BC, be uh, a tangent? Sure if I drew it properly, um, yeah. Okay, so let's say will there be a tangent where m is now the intersection of our diagonal? Oh, it's a little int as well, you know. I like the int here. Yeah. So what we're gonna do? Uh, how do we how do we show that um, that this is a uh, tangent? There's a few actually from. Uh, that little circle geometry, which I know a lot of people don't like. But what we can do, we can even construct this line over here. And then uh, we see that this length here now becomes like a, a diameter. And we know that um, angles that are made from a diameter is uh, 90 degrees, right? So this, this angle over here becomes 90. So... Uh, and from this point, what we see is is a there's a theorem called tan tan core theorem, right? Familiar. So, and from tan core theorem, we know that this angle here, and then we say this angle here is 90. And remember, this is still a square, and we know uh, from a square that the corner angle is 90 degrees. So if this angle and this angle is the same, uh, then that's because of tan co theorem, where tan is a tangent. Therefore, uh, the line BC is a, is in fact the tangent. You know, it is a, a oh, oh no, where am I looking? Over here. And then we know that BC is a tangent. So you answer the question, you say uh, BC is a tangent. Tangent. Uh, and then you say your reason behind it, because obviously the same motivate your answer. You say because 
of Tanko theorem, but um, let's have to show that this is 90 degrees. Uh, and yeah, normally, normally it's because if this was a diameter, but there are cases where this might not be a diameter. So the better reason is because if you have a square over here, ah, perfectly drawn square over here, and you find your diagonals, right? Then the, the cool thing about um, the intercepts, uh, it, these develop 90 degrees as well. I mean, little squares within the square. So, right. so all of those are 90. So this angle here is that's another reason for this. I think that's actually a better reason than the one I mentioned before. Which other one should actually work as well. So we say, um, oh, it's this angle over here, M, A, A M, B. So we say, therefore, uh, a M B is equal to 90 degrees uh, because of properties of a square and then we see that this angle was this angle over here G B yeah, G B F or G B C also work. we see that um, G B C is actually a better one uh, G B C yeah, uh, GBC is equal to A M B which is equal to 90 because of Dan Kuo theorem. And yo, if we know if Dan Kuo theorem says that it, uh, it's true, if we, we just prove in Dan Kuo theorem because the angles are equal, then therefore it has to be a tangent because, you know, Dan, tangent, and that's our reason. So yeah, I'm gonna be cutting it there. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope this helps. Um, good luck to anybody uh, writing papers. If you like the video, show sure, be sure to drop a like. And if you struggle with anything else, comment below on what I should tackle. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.